On today's episode of Why Did I Buy This? We've got a 2015 Chevy Equinox in the house. Picked it up from a local Chevy GM, whatever you want to call it, dealer. As a crank no start. This dealership sold this customer a new car over a timing chain issue. They recommended that the engine should be replaced. And so what I would like to do today in this episode is go through some basic checks that should be performed before condemning an engine that may or may not need a timing chain. I've seen this over and over again with the Chevy Equinox engines. So if you look real closely, one of the first things you should be able to see if you have bent valves. You see these right here? Little rocker arms, followers, whatever you want to call them. Those will pop out if you have a bent valve. Not a 100% chance, but probably like 90% chance. If you have a bent valve, you should be able to look across the top of your engine and see whether or not these are intact. Every time I've ever had one of these bent valves, the clearance is lost because the valve gets bent and it doesn't rise all the way back up into its seat. And that rocker follower will fall out. So first things first, if you have a customer or your car, you have a shop, and the shop tells you that your Ecotech needs to be replaced. They say your engine's bad. You should ask them if they've performed either A, a leak down test to confirm whether or not the cylinders are leaking air indicating a valve bent issue, a bent valve issue, or you should ask them to spend a little bit of time, and you're going to pay for both of these tests by the way, but perform a visual inspection. Look over the top side of the engine. Look to see if those rocker followers, rocker arms, are intact. If they are, there is a decent chance this in your engine like this one, will be able to be repaired by replacing the timing chain. So, conditions. Let's recap a little bit. This engine, when you crank it, it makes a slapping sound. It revs quickly, and it revs with an audible skip to compression, meaning that you don't hear the starter working against the compression of each stroke. There's a cranking compression test you can do if you want to on your own car if it's still running good go out to another car in your driveway put the gas pedal to the floor then start the start sequence so crank the engine over what that does is it puts the vehicle into clear flood mode clear flood mode turns off the fuel injectors most cars not all but most cars when you put it into clear flood mode you can crank it over and you can hear the rhythm that the starter makes as it works against the compression that's being built in the cylinders. So, perform a leak down test, perform a cranking compression test, and you'll hear the engine spinning really quickly, and you'll also hear the timing chain clatter. So what, if you hear noise, you hear a clattery sound, there's a decent chance that what that noise actually is, is the timing chain slapping against Whatever's left, you know, this this should have a plastic piece. The plastic piece is gone. It's down in the oil pan. And there are guides on the front and guides on the back side of the engine. If those guides disappear, the chain is going to flutter around, causing the slapping sound. So if you have an engine that does not start, it has timing chain codes, it cranks like it doesn't have any compression and you hear a slapping noise. It's not a guarantee that what I'm telling you right now is going to prevent you from having to replace the engine, but these are tests that should be performed before condemning a $6,000 engine plus a few thousand dollars in labor. Used, these 2.4 liter engines are hovering around the $3,000 mark to get a decent quality lower mileage one. Now, what causes the timing chains to go bad. Well, that's debatable. They stretch over time. They can stretch due to normal wear and tear, but they can also 
expedite their stretchiness by running the engine low on oil. These 2.4 liter direct injected engines are known for consuming oil. I think that's pretty obvious. If you're watching this video, you've probably ran across other videos discussing the oil consumption problems. So if you have an engine that burns oil and you run that engine low on oil, oil is not only a lubricant, it's also a coolant and it helps retain the integrity of steel components in your engine. So imagine that your engine runs low on oil the overall oil operating temp goes higher, that is gonna translate into a steel timing chain that runs warmer or hotter than it was designed to. Metal fatigues with heat, that can, or is theorized, does lead to the timing chain stretching sooner. This car has 103,000 miles on it. The previous owner did a whole bunch of work to it. I got stacker receipts. They took care of a lot of issues on this car, like brakes and tires, suspension parts but they lacked maintenance of engine oil. There is no oil light on these cars. It will not tell you when you are low on oil. You have to be mindful and check it on your own. So, pull your valve cover off, have a visual inspection, look to see whether or not any of those followers are missing. If they are, it's game over. You're pulling ahead. At a minimum, you're pulling ahead. But let's talk about that. Can you fix this engine by replacing just the head? The answer is sometimes. So a leak down test, a boroscope camera, I should say, a boroscope camera can be used to look down the cylinder. There's your, okay, there's your spark plug. You can put a camera down the hole and you can look with with certainty. You can see visually if the valve broke free from the stem, if the head of the valve broke free from the stem and bounced around in the cylinder, you're going to have a hole in a piston. It's, it's hit or miss. So what does it cost to replace the timing chain if that's all you need? Probably 1500 bucks, roughly. So if you're going to ask a tech or a shop owner to perform a visual test and or perform a leak down test with a compression gauge or whatever you're going to pay for that you're going to invest an hour or two up front to possibly end up in a conclusion where yes you have to pull the engine out and replace it but you also may invest that couple hours and they could come to a conclusion that a timing chain may resurrect your engine so you're still going to have oil consumption problems because you're not messing with the valves so if if the oil consumption is what led to your valve train, or excuse me, your timing chain stretching, you're still going to have to keep an eye on your oil. Your engine's still going to burn. Oil is still going to have the original hours or miles on it that it did, with the exception of a new chain. But you're going to be in it for a fraction, a sixth, a fifth of the price of a new engine. So if you're looking at an engine in a car that is 200,000 miles on it, you're not going to invest in a new engine, more than likely. On something that's 10 plus years old but would you invest 1500 bucks to keep your beater with a heater on the road most people would if they knew that was even an option so why do shops just chuck an engine in rather than attempt to look further it's probably because of cya cover your assets right if i'm a shop owner and i have a customer that may or may not understand the depth or breadth of the job that we're performing, they may think they're getting a new engine or a rebuilt or, I don't know, reconditioned engine. You're not. You're not getting that with just timing chains. You are repairing just a problem. Um, I also think that, so I guess what happens is people may complain, right? They may have other complaints later due to like other issues with the engine. But honestly, I think one of the bigger issues that leads most shops to just replace the engine, I think they don't know how to do the timing chain jobs, or they don't know how to do compression tests, or they're uncertain about how to make a judgment call on whether or not the engine's good. They just chuck a motor in. If you sell an engine, you're putting an engine in that all this has been replaced. It's all brand new. You're not going this far in. All you're doing is nuts and bolts, you know, motor mounts, hoses, electrical connectors. You pull this whole unit out. You put a whole new unit in and you cross your fingers and hope that the used engine or the remanufactured engine is good. 
there's way less risk in doing that than there is opening an, an engine up and performing heart surgery on it. So this is how I make a lot of money, guys. I buy these cars just like this where a technician in another shop recommended an engine. The customer said, hey, you know what? I'm not spending six, seven, eight thousand dollars on this vehicle. It's only worth that. Trade me into something else. So they give them some trade credit on their old car. They go buy a new car. The used one, the one they traded in, gets offered up to auction, wholesale, guys like me. We snag these things up. I snag these up. I look for these. I, I go to the Chevy dealers and I ask them, do you have any Ecotech engines that are bad, cars with this engine that are bad? And they'll call me when they run across one because it's a regular occurrence in a decent-sized dealership. But this engine should run. So I'm, I'm hoping the next video, I'm going to close this down. I'm going to do the timing chain job, and then I'm going to have an, a video of this engine running. So I'll be right back. All right, so here we are about uh, maybe three hours tops later. I got it all buttoned up. I'll show you the guide and pieces that I took out of it. Shop's a mess. You can all the garbage, but there's the guide. That piece right there broke off. The top plastic, it's gone. I have no idea where that went. Old chain. The other guide. Phasers. I've learned to just replace these phasers always, no matter what. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you have to go back in and replace one because the parking peg broke. And the, uh, oh yeah, here's the tensioner. That tensioner's messed up, guys. I gotta double check a few things, but from what I recall, every time I pop these out, that center peg is sticking out further. So I have a feeling that chain is not even really stretched all that much. And really the only thing that probably happened and really the only thing that probably happened was uh, the tensioner compressed in and stayed in for some reason so I got the oil topped off took about a quart of oil maybe a quart and a half so it was low but now it's time to fire it up and see what she does look at the odometer on this one 103,000 miles alright moment of truth That thing fired right up. That's incredible. It's the AC work. This is where I get to find out how in op my in ops are. AC seems to be working. All right. Transmission do anything. Forward. Reverse. All right, cool. I call this one a success. I'll drive it out. I'll do a uh, oil consumption test on it just to kind of get an idea of what type of oil this thing burns, if it burns, how much, you know, they all pretty much burn oil, but if I retail it, I want to be able to tell the next guy, hey, keep an eye on it every thousand miles, every two thousand miles, etc. kind of guesstimate how much oil it burns based off of like three or four hundred miles worth of driving. Sometimes you can find out pretty quick, like this is a turd and you don't want to sell this to somebody that needs pistons, but... That's really only happened a couple times where they burnt oil so bad that it was it was just not going to happen as a retail. But nice little uh, devious camera work. Fantastic. Backup cam works. So yeah, I guess the moral of the story is um, don't always trust the dealer or the mechanic that tells you you need a whole engine. I'll be honest with you guys, on this engine, I decided to skip doing the leak down test. Just based on experience, I had pretty good, uh, pretty good, what's the word for it? I had a pretty good opinion about whether or not this thing would run, and I think I was correct. Uh, so, just because the dealer says you need to replace your engine because the timing chain's rattling and you're skipping around, not making any compression, make sure you pay them, or ask them at least, if you can pay them to do a leak down test or a visual inspection or both in a best world best case scenario to see whether or not you really need an engine. Take care. We'll see you on the next one. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for more content from Shed House.